This hour of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. You know, I've been behind this microphone. It'll soon be 22 years, right, Mr. Producer? With the same company, although it keeps changing, it went from ABC Radio Networks to Citadel to Cumulus, and then Cumulus was bought out, and so it's Cumulus Westwood One. I haven't changed, they keep changing. And you've stood by me thick and thin. Some of you now go to the podcast. Some of you now go to satellite. Some of you now go to live streaming with the apps. And so we have multiple platforms. And of course, our great affiliates. So I learned today, it's conveyed to me, that there's a complaint, Mr. Producer. You know what the complaint is? That I turned down... Erectile dysfunction commercials. Westwood One is upset with yours truly because I say no ED commercials on my radio show, whether voiced or recorded. It's always been my position because salespeople will do anything for a buck except the right thing. And I explain to them my audience doesn't want to hear about erectile dysfunction. You could have young people listening. They don't want to hear about erectile dysfunction. I don't want to hear about erectile dysfunction. And sometimes, sometimes, salespeople and companies need to do what's right. And so I just point this out. There are people who would pressure me to put all kinds of slop on this broadcast. I refuse to do it to you. It ain't going to happen. I try to prevent it on TV when I'm there. I tell them, no, don't run those things. We certainly don't do it on Blaze. And uh, so I will continue to reject anything that has to do with that kind of stuff or other bodily functions. And, you know, these companies that push this ED stuff and this, you know, hemorrhoid stuff and all that, they'll spend a fortune because they're looking for platforms that are stupid enough to take the money. Stupid enough to take the money. So you see, I'm just too classy, Mr. Producer, I think that was the word, that I just won't lower myself to do these things. Other hosts do it. You know who they are. You listen to it. 
The money comes flowing in. Other hosts do it. But I'm not. Or anything like it. Rush Limbaugh told me something a long time ago. And there's not a salesperson, a corporate executive, anything that will change it or change me. That you have to have integrity. That you have to respect your audience. Even though you're going to be pressured not to. I would do it anyway, that is, have integrity and respect my audience, without Rush ever telling me that. But that's why you and I are different. You, my audience, and I, how I view you, we're different. You'll have hosts that'll sell anything. So that it'll go through the sales department, it'll come to me, and I'm the final checkoff, right, Mr. Producer? And I've had to stop some, a number of things that I cannot get behind. I cannot trust. It might be a sponsor I can't trust. It might be a service or a product I can't trust. Or it might be something that's just grotesque. Like pushing electrolyte dysfunction creams or something like that. That's not going to happen here. Ever. You know, in the media, they call this whoring yourself. And you've heard hosts who whore themselves. And by the way, in all forms of media, including all the leftists at CNN and MSNBC, and you look at the pages of the New York Times, they have all kinds of sick crap advertisement going on. But not here. Not as long as I'm here. That's not going to happen. You know what else it says? When you see advertisements like that or hear them, when you see them in the New York Times or hear them on cable TV or even on radio, that tells you that whoever is doing sales for the New York Times or CNN or MSNBC or any radio network, they're not up to the job. They're not up to the job. You should not be suggesting to hosts TV, radio, podcast, whatever they are, to push sleeves. Period. By the way, I'm not just talking about swirling around me. I'm talking about swirling around everybody. You've got to have enough integrity. You've got to have enough ethics. You've got to have enough morality to say, as the final stop, no. No. So you won't hear that stuff coming out of my mouth. You'll hear it coming out of other people's mouths. You will. Even friends. But not mine. But not mine. I have a family. I have children. I have grandchildren. I don't talk to them this way. Why would I talk to all of you, the whole nation? Why would I talk to the whole nation this way? Period. It's not worth it. We have fun here. We joke around here. We're very serious here. We get into substance like nowhere else. We talk about history and economics. I play music like most hosts don't because I like to. This is what I do. I've created names for individuals. Used to share some with Rush and so forth. That's what I do. We have a fantastic substantive program, a fantastic audience, and fantastic affiliates. Fantastic. And it's going to stay that way. Don't you agree, Mr. Producer? Mr. Producer has been with me for the whole time. Right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. And the funny thing is, companies come and go, for the most part, especially in radio. As I said, I haven't moved. Same microphone. ABC Radio Networks, Citadel, Cumulus, Cumulus Westwood One. Executives keep changing. Managers keep changing. The sales force, I'm probably with my seventh sales executive. They keep changing. 
but you've got to have some core, some conscious. And conservative talk radio has to be the defense for these things, because there won't be any others. There won't be any others. So I just pass that along to you. So we have this attorney general in the state of New York. Her name is Letitia James. She should have been disbarred from day one. There are rules of professional ethics in every single state that if people are running for positions, prosecutorial positions, DAs, attorneys general, and so forth, they have to run their campaigns in a certain way that don't violate the rules of professional ethics for lawyers. She violated the rules. You're not supposed to campaign about how you're going to target somebody. And so she should be punished because the theory is you're doing damage to the legal profession. In addition to the justice system and to the person you're targeting. But in New York, the whole damn thing is corrupt. Why? Because it's controlled by the Democrats up and down the chain. It's a totalitarian party. And they liked Letitia James. And so what Letitia James did is she found a statute that's never been used, as you know. It's never been used in this way where a person is not guilty of fraud, where a person has paid off all their debt, even early. Where you even have banks who've testified on behalf of the person. There's no complainant, none. And yet there's that statute, which has nothing to do with real estate development. She dusts it off. She brings it in front of a radical, left-wing, bizarre freakish elected state judge that's as low as it gets these elected trial judges i didn't say they're all low i said that's as low as it gets on the judicial chain he's running for office in one of the most left-wing democrat areas in the country and he made a spectacle of his courtroom trump didn't he did he finds trump guilty on the papers before trump ever steps into the courtroom And now what Letitia James is trying to do, like Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, when I remember that black and white photo, him walking down the street with reporters pointing to buildings with left and right, office buildings, companies, estates. And he said in Spanish, see that? That now belongs to us. See that? That now belongs. Just walking down the street, nationalizing properties on behalf of the government. Destroyed Venezuela. And Donald Trump is being told that you have to put up half a billion dollars, which is the amount of money that the judge determined he has to pay the state. You have to put up the entire amount in order to even file an appeal. So they boxed him in. They boxed Trump in. If he doesn't appeal, he loses half a billion dollars. If he does appeal, he has to give up half a billion dollars. And what's happening is apparently I've read he's approached like 30 potential massive lenders, and none of them want anything to do with it. You want to know why? Because they're scared. They don't want to get dragged into this. They see the power of one-party rule, the power of government. They don't want to be destroyed with these phony statutes. And these phony judges and these phony prosecutors. And now Letitia James, while she's putting out the information that she wants to take away his golf club in New Jersey, which is where Donald Trump has his home on the East Coast, by the way, and Trump Tower, and sell them as fast as possible for the half a billion dollars, even before an appellate court has ruled. This buffoonish clown in a black robe judge, today he ordered the prosecutor who he knew, who he appointed to oversee Trump's properties to be prepared to sell them. Right from out, right out from under him. Before he even has his due process, that is a right to appeal. I said the other day that Republican billionaires need to get together 
and lend him the money so he can file his appeal. Obviously, they'd get paid back because he's got all that real estate, and that's good collateral. Of course, the left thought that was kind of funny. Now, on The View, where you have at least two anti-Semites, all grifters, especially Griffin the grifter, They think it's funny. Sonny Houston, who claims to be a lawyer, says she can't wait until they put the chain locks on Trump Tower. She'd like to be there to see it. These are totalitarians who do not believe in liberty, who do not believe in civil liberties, and do not believe in your rights. They would just assume a mass murder. A mass murder have unfettered access to appeal after appeal after appeal than Donald Trump. Now this is going to affect the city of New York. It's going to further destroy the state of New York, which is what they want. But I want to tell you some other thing, one other thing quickly before the break. When the government get used to stealing things and taking things, you're in their crosshairs too. And it's already happened. How has it happened? It's already happened. It's already happened to you. And I'm going to explain it when we return. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800 900 8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800 900 8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. The Democrat, the Democrat Party, that's for sure. This totalitarian party, first it had to purify its own ranks. It had to get rid of every moderate Democrat politician in any significant position they possibly could. And they've pretty much achieved that. Maybe you have a mansion here or so forth. But when you look at the ranks of the Democrat Party in the House, they're all hardcore radicals, hardcore. Same with the Senate. Schumer's moved over like Biden. Schumer, hardcore. Bernie Sanders calls the shots. So the Democrat Party, first of all, like a communist party, has to purify its ranks. And it's done that through the primary process and other threats and so forth. That's how AOC got in there. That's how all of these people get in there. So you got to purify your ranks. I'm going to continue after the break. So that's been accomplished. Now what's next? Stick with me. I'll be right back. Attention, fellow Americans. Mark Levin here with a warning and a solution. I feel like our country is being destroyed by out-of-control spending and debt thanks to Biden and the American Marxists. And your hard-earned savings and retirement could be at risk from their socialist schemes. That's why you should consider Advantage Gold the best of the best, a U.S.-based company that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their wealth. They have a simple solution to help you even potentially grow your wealth, despite the attacks from Washington. I urge you to register for their upcoming Gold and Silver Summit. It's fabulous. A free online event where you'll learn tips to help safeguard your finances by diversifying into physical precious metals. 
Call 800-900-8000. Call them right now to sign up securely for this pivotal summit. It is crucial. Tell them Mark Levin sent you for a special bonus. Call 800-900-8000 right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. On the straight and narrow path, you have a guide. Mark Levin. Call him now at 877-381-3811. The Environmental Protection Agency was created about 1970 by Richard Nixon. That's a little over half a century ago. Its mission is obviously to take steps. It was to clean up Love Canal, other pollution and toxic sites and so forth. Its mission was never to determine what kind of possessions you could have, or what choices you could make about various possessions. And so what happened in a case called Massachusetts versus EPA, this case was brought to the Supreme Court, and Massachusetts said that carbon dioxide is a pollutant, or pollutant-like, L-I-K-E, and since the EPA won't regulate it, it means that we folks in Massachusetts... We have to live with the carbon dioxide that is spewed in other states, like New York, as it moves its way up north, up the East Coast, and so forth. It was a preposterous case, quite frankly. Utterly preposterous. And yet, uh, the court took it up. And it was an effort by Massachusetts and the radicals there to, through the back door, get the EPA to regulate carbon dioxide. It was so important to regulate carbon dioxide, then you could regulate the entire, uh, you know, the entire economy. And so, um, the court ruled five to four that the EPA had the power to regulate carbon dioxide, even though the court said carbon dioxide is not a, a chemical pollutant, Uh, It can be viewed as a pollutant-like, that is, a pollutant per se. Since that time, they've been pushing this climate change agenda. First, it was obviously global cooling, then global warming, then climate change. So they don't have to be precise whether it's cooling or warming. It just is what it is. And it was an ideology that was concocted in Europe in the 1970s by groups of Marxists who called themselves degrowthers, who want to destroy the, uh, the capitalist industrial heartland, particularly of the West in our country. That's what happened. Um, so, uh, what happened next, of course, was that you get the Supreme Court ruling, now we have climate change, so what are the limits on the EPA? If they wrap their agenda in clean air and clean water, what are the limits? There are no limits, apparently. Now you know why they use this court decision to basically regulate everything in your home. To basically regulate everything in your home. And yesterday they issued a regulation. In eight years' time, it will be virtually impossible to purchase an automobile or truck that uses the combustion engine. The overwhelming majority of you listening to this program and others who aren't own a vehicle that requires you to pull up to a gas station and fill up the car. There are plenty of gas stations wherever you go all over the country. But Joe Biden, John Kerry, Al Gore, and, the, and their ilk and the rest, they've decided that you will not be using your vehicles anymore. And that two-thirds of the vehicle fleet and small truck fleet on our streets must be electric vehicles whether you like it or not. They are regulating out of existence the kind of vehicle, the kind of small truck 
that the overwhelming majority of you use and drive and want. They're going to force small businesses, car dealers, to put them in their windows and in their showrooms whether they like it or not. They're going to force our automobile manufacturers and all the men and women on the assembly lines to manufacture these vehicles, whether they like it or not, whether you like it or not, whether anybody likes it or not. The problems are going to become immense. The electrical grid will collapse. It cannot handle this. There's nothing been done to expand it or to protect it. It's already at its breaking point. Ask the people in California. Ask the people in Texas who suffered. Ask the people in New York. And all they do is blame climate change. If something goes wrong, climate change. So they have their boogeyman. It's not climate change. It's them. These electric charge stations. We spent ourselves in a near bankruptcy with the so-called phony Inflation Reduction Act. They didn't build a single electric charge station, even though they were supposed to build hundreds of thousands of them. And let's say they do. What are they going to hook up to? The electrical grid. It's barely sustainable as it is. And as I've said over and over again, particularly for the more dense parts of our country, populated areas, in our cities, how is this going to work? We have apartment complexes. Just drive through New York. And hope you're not carjacked. But just drive through New York. Drive through Chicago. Drive through any major city in America. You've got skyscrapers. Apartments. Condominiums. What are you going to do? Where are these charging stations going to be? How many are you going to have on the streets? And to really get a good charge can take up to 35, 40 minutes. What are you going to do? These questions I ask, nobody else asks. So we're just going to automatically move. And here's what they're doing. They're trying to force an industrial policy top down by the government, like fascistic and Marxist and autocratic regimes all over the world, on to the people, whether they like it or not, whether it's affordable or not. And that's how you create poverty. That's how you create economic dislocation. And that is what they are doing. They're stealing your right to make decisions about your private property. They're stealing your right to make decisions about how you will live your life. They're stealing your right to make decisions about how you will spend your money. They're doing to you in a much smaller way what they're doing to Donald Trump. They're seizing your liberty. They're seizing your property. And they're doing it through the back door. They're corrupt. They're corrupt. And they don't believe in democracy. They're doing this through the Environmental Protection Agency. Now what happens when you literally have millions of vehicles and small trucks plugging in at the same time? What happens? Well, the grid will collapse. So what will the government do, Mr. Producer? It will regulate who can use the charging stations, how long they can use them, what time of the day or which day you can use them. If you have more than one vehicle, whether you can charge more than one vehicle. And all through it, we'll be funding hundreds of billions some point trillions of dollars to the communist Chinese because without the communist Chinese and their control of lithium, cobalt little African kids in the Congo and elsewhere dying from toxic pollution working day and night digging out the cobalt mines for the communist Chinese what then? Our supply chain reaches directly to Beijing, China. And what about 
all the other utilities, all the other purposes of electricity. Well, we need electricity for our buildings, don't we? Our homes. We need electricity for basics, like hospitals, police stations, fire stations. We need electricity for lights. We need electricity to cook. Electricity is ubiquitous in our lives and in our society. We can thank Tesla. Edison too, but mostly Tesla for electricity. I want you to think about it. The government will reach into your home and not just decide what kind of toaster you can have or a light bulb or ceiling fan. That seems kind of Mickey Mouse, right? It's going to have to monitor who uses what, when, to see if you break the regulations, if you go over the limit. You see, all of this will have an enormous economic impact on you, on your jobs, on your lifestyle, on your prosperity, but most of all, your liberty. Because when the government creates pandemics, when the government creates shortages, the government never steps back. The government doesn't say, okay, upon circumspection here, we did the wrong thing, let's reverse course. No, no, no. They're going to take aim at you. You're using too much energy. Your home is too big. Too many cars. You're driving too far. You're washing too many clothes. We told you not to wash clothes at night. Only do dishes every fourth day. In other words, the government then is in charge of what? Controlling the redistribution of electricity because electricity will be scarcer and scarcer. We need electricity for everything. That's why our dear buddy passed away. Peter Pry used to say, you wipe out, wipe out the electrical grid. Uh, most people won't be able to survive more than a week or two or three tops. Because everything goes. Refrigeration. Everything. And so what's happening here... Listen to me carefully. Don't worry about what the naysayers and the leftists and all the phonies say about what I say. You can hear what I say. We will destroy our electrical grid without the help of the communist Chinese or the Russians or the North Koreans or the Iranians. We will destroy it ourselves. There won't be enough electricity. These cars are not perfected. They could be extremely dangerous, particularly in accidents. We know this from our experience. And when there are accidents, and when there are fires, of which there are more typically than there are with combustion engine vehicles, they spew toxic, toxic pollution into the air, toxic chemicals. Ask any firefighter, what's more dangerous, a combustion engine vehicle or electric vehicle? They'll tell you. It's also much more difficult to get a person who's stuck in their vehicle, if their car is totaled or something like, to get them out of the vehicle. The jaws of life, it's not so simple because the electrical lines and all the rest that are built into the structure of the vehicle. What are we going to do with all these batteries? Millions and millions and millions of toxic batteries. Big batteries. Big that have a life of about 10 years tops, if you're lucky. Where where are we going to put those? Electric vehicles don't protect the environment. Where do you think electricity comes from? Electricity doesn't come from electricity. And try as we might, electricity doesn't come from windmills. Electricity doesn't come from solar panels. Unless you're about 12 people living in the woods, then you can live that way, but we're not. We're an industrial society. So they're destroying our capitalist system. They're destroying our industrial system. They're destroying our freedom, our property rights. With one little regulation coming out of the EPA in Washington, D.C. that you have absolutely no say in. None whatsoever. 
Does that sound like a constitutional republic to you? And the reason Biden is doing it, and he's doing it, and the reason his people are doing it this way is because they know you would never vote for this. You would never support it. So they're doing it. I just spent 10 or 15 minutes, maybe a little longer, explaining this entire subject to you. Tell me, has this ever been explained to you on television? On any platform? No, it hasn't. And they're not going to. They're just going to tell you this is very, very important for clean air and clean water and climate change will kill us if we don't do this. No, the Democrats, their agenda, that's what's going to kill us. Be right back. Mark Lovin. My fellow Americans, we're living in very perilous economic times. Washington seems determined to bankrupt our nation with endless stimulus spending. As they devalue our dollar, hardworking Americans like you could lose everything. That's why I urge you strongly, register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. They'll teach you how to help guard your wealth using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver can offer a defense against the dollar's devaluation, and the experts at Advantage Gold will explain how you can convert some of your savings into precious metals that can protect and potentially grow your wealth. With currency debasement from Washington and global uncertainty on the rise, gold and silver diversification could offer you some stability. Call 800-900-8000 right now to sign up. 800-900-8000 now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Federal Housing Administration has instituted a uh, national zoning policy we've talked about here over the years that will destroy the American suburbs and exurbs, preventing the building of single-family homes. Have you noticed, and I've noticed in Loudoun County, Virginia, that they're building endlessly apartment buildings and townhouses and apartment condos, very little single-family homes? Have you noticed that in most of your communities, particularly in the suburbs? That's being compelled by Washington, D.C. and the Biden administration. They want to eliminate your ability to have your own vehicles. They want to build these uh, public transportation centers. They want to determine where your schools are going to be, where your uh, uh, parks are going to be. This is all coming out of the uh, out of HUD. Don't think this is just Donald Trump and so this is you. This is you. They're on the move and they're trying to exploit it and they are exploiting it. And they're, they're about more than that. They, it's about controlling you. If you can't control the kind of home you have, the kind of neighborhood you live in, what kind of vehicle you can drive, what kind of appliances you can have in your own home, and they're going to get to a point where they're going to want to monitor all of it, they want to regulate all of it, they want to see how you're living your life, and in order to save the planet, you have to change the way you live. Folks, this is what's going on. It's going on right now, this minute. See, we got through that entire hour without talking about ED, erection dysfunction. I just tell the sales force at Westwood One, see how easy that was? I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Just like this past hour in my entire career, erectile dysfunction. We will not have those commercials this hour. Just a heads up. I want to dig into this a little bit further. Ladies and gentlemen... 
You don't have the right to pick the kind of air conditioning system you have, the kind of window air conditioner you have. You don't have the right anymore to pick the kind of refrigerator you want, washer, dryer, dishwasher, ceiling fan, lawnmower, snowblower, toaster. The government decides what your choices are. It'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. You're going to have no right to pick the kind of automobile you want in eight years. You will be driving an electrical vehicle whether you like it or not. And the cost of a combustion engine vehicle will be so expensive, it'll be unaffordable. And you'll see people holding on to their combustion engine vehicles like you see 1957 Chevys in Cuba. The electrical grid will be severely endangered, which means everything attached to it, everything. Banks, hospitals, our military will all be subject to brownouts and blackouts and the redistribution of energy. I can see it. The redistribution of energy from one part of the country to the other as they desperately try to find out ways to get electricity to and fro shutting down coal mines, and we need coal for electricity, shutting down oil pipelines, and we need oil, particularly natural gas, to produce electricity, shutting them down. Which, of course, makes the Middle East stronger. So we're going to rely on our vehicles from China. We're going to rely on our energy from the Middle East. And as we've discussed here with Stanley Kurtz, and we will again, They're coming after the suburbs. And that started earlier this week with Joe Biden in Nevada. Federal zoning. They're going to tie money that communities get to blackmail. That they will zone communities the way that HUD and the Democrats want them zoned. No more single family homes. No more one-acre lots. They want density. They want apartment buildings. They want townhouse after townhouse after townhouse. They want them built in very strict ways around potential public transportation centers. Doesn't it sound like the Soviet Union? They want to build. They uh, they want to determine where parks will be placed, where schools will be placed. Density. That's what they want. Public transportation. Smaller homes. They want to limit the amount of vehicles you're going to have one day. They want to be able to monitor, and you get this all the time, even from blue states, how fast you're driving or how far you're driving. All in the name of, of course, uh, clean air and clean water. They will destroy what liberty you have. Over and over again, the EPA and the Interior Department have attempted To expand the navigable waters, navigable waters definition to include a pond in your backyard, or even a temporary pond from a heavy rain in your backyard, as a right for the federal government to tell you that you have no right, no right to be productive on your own land, whether to farm it or to ranch it, whether to build an extension to your home. If it's in a commercial area, to build an apartment complex or extend your apartment, excuse me, yeah, yeah, an office complex or to extend your office. You see, the Democrat Party exists to destroy your liberty. And yet there are people who defend this. I saw some of them, I told you, on Sunday. 
And I will get into this soon when I'm able to, but I can't because I don't want to create a problem for a specific individual and foundation. Remember I told the story, Mr. Producer? I told the story about this event. Uh, my wife, Julie, was a one of the panelists. Ellen West was one. Stuart Force, whose son was murdered by Palestinians, peaceful Palestinians in Jerusalem. He was a war veteran and a West Point graduate. Great, good-looking young man, strapping young man, and they stabbed him to death. And when the truth was told about what the Biden administration is doing to Israel, that it's not doing much, if anything, to fight anti-Semitism in America, that it's giving aid and comfort to Hamas, that Hamas is hanging on because the Biden administration is demanding that Israel not destroy the final battalions and their leaders. It's really quite unbelievable. And all the reasons I've discussed here many times before. Several dozen of them walked out. Democrats, leftists. But there's another chapter to this story, Mr. Producer. They not only walked out, they've contacted the local university and they've demanded that the foundation never, ever again be able to rent that auditorium for any of its activities. You like that? And they want a step further. They want the IRS to investigate the organization and shut it down. These are the people who cheer the prospect of Donald Trump going to prison. These are the people who cheer the prospect of Donald Trump having his property stolen out from under him just for the right to appeal. That's why some days you really have to wonder. You really have to wonder about humanity. The framers of our Constitution figured it out. They knew there were too many people like this. Both the evil elites and the ignorant masses that would follow them no matter what, even if it's against their own best interests. That's why we have a constitution, not a democracy, not a parliament. You see, the framers of your constitution, most of whom were founders, they read the great philosophers. John Locke was tops among them. When they came to writing the constitution, the most important philosopher... Involves separation of powers. Montesquieu. You ever get a chance, you ought to read some of Locke and read some of Montesquieu. Absolutely brilliant men. Four, five, six hundred years ago. And the framers of your constitution knew that voting per se would not secure your unalienable rights. In fact, it would endanger them. You know enough people to know that if they had the right to vote, they'd steal your property. They'd vote to take it. It's called the mob. It's called mobocracy. And so they created a, an admixture. Lifetime appointed judges. A bicameral Congress. A Senate that was to be selected by state legislatures. A president, a vice president, not directly elected. There had to be something that came and sort of vetted through the process of the election process and the eventual, uh, I won't say appointment, the winning process of serving as president and vice president, a check on the mob. The only directly elected body was the House of Representatives. Now we directly elect the Senate. And the Democrats want to directly elect the president and vice president. Why? Because they're the mob. They're the Marxists. They're the river to the sea crowd. They're the mob. They know how to whip up the mob. They know how to subsidize it, you know, student loans and all the rest. They're good at the mob part. We're constitutionalists. Some days I say, think to myself, geez, it's not really a fair fight, is it? But it is what it is. So we have a republic, a constitutional republic. And so now they, they rule over us, they lord over us by massive administrative state. The EPA wants to take your vehicle away. HUD 
wants to take your single family homes away. Interior wants to take away your private property rights and what you can do with your actual property. All colluding, all aimed at destroying your liberty and taking what you earn, just like with Trump in New York. This is why they hate Trump. Trump undid every one of these Obama-Biden policies. He killed every damn one of them right in the womb. He was the obstacle. For them to succeed, he must be removed. And so when you look at Nikki Haley, and when you look at Larry Hogan, who's double digits in the lead for winning a Senate seat for Maryland, because it's a Democrat state, they love Republicans like Hogan. Why wouldn't they? When you look at the Wall Street Journal editorial page, when you look at John Lehman, the former great head of the Navy, who does not speak for Reagan alum, the vast majority of Reagan alums support Donald Trump, including Ed Meese. The fact of the matter is they are siding with the tyrants and the Marxists and the Islamists. Even if they claim they're not going to vote for Biden, they'll vote third party, which is effectively a vote for Biden. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. We want to welcome our buddy Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz, how are you, sir? Mark, great to be with you. Ted, first of all, you have a podcast with my buddy, Bed Ferguson. Your podcast is called what and who is your platform with is it iheart radio it, it, it is iheart yeah and what do you and call your verdict with, it's called verdict with ted cruz and verdict we do ted it three cruz. days a week we do it monday wednesday and friday all right and you're with iheart correct yeah correct all right i want to get into a number of issues here first of all why does the democrat party deny what everybody sees that it hates the state of israel and it will do almost nothing to defend Children in this in this uh, country and others who are being threatened with anti-Semitic uh, violence. Why why do they pretend they're none of those things? Uh, look, it it is the sad reality, and it, and it nothing laid that more bare than Chuck Schumer's disgraceful speech on the Senate floor last week, where where he called for the for the overthrow of the democratically elected. Uh, Prime Minister of Israel. He called for a new election in Israel to to throw Benjamin Netanyahu out of office. And and to the best of my knowledge, there 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 is absolutely no precedent in the history of our country for any senator doing something like this, much less the Senate Majority Leader. And and it's notable, Mark. He didn't call for the overthrow of the leadership of Hamas. He didn't call for the overthrow of the leadership of Iran or of Russia, or China, or North Korea, or Venezuela. He chose the world's only Jewish state. And, and, uh, and understand, his criticism, I get that he hates Prime Minister Netanyahu personally, but his criticism is not with Netanyahu, it's not with Bibi. It is with the voters of Israel who elected him. They had an election. Israel is our friend and ally. He is the elected leader. And yet, Schumer has the arrogance and condescension to treat Israel like some banana republic, some puppet state. It it was truly disgraceful. And to do it in the middle of a war, to do it while Israel is defending itself from the horrific acts of terrorism of October 7th is even more disgraceful. And and I'll tell you, Mark, something that that, that you know, but, but that often gets overlooked. 
A lot of people talk about the squad, the, 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 the radical anti-Semites in, in the House, and, and they're a problem. But the real problem is the anti-Israel and anti-Semitic sentiment is not confined just to the fringe of the Democrat Party. It is more and more the so-called mainstream of the Democrat Party, as embodied by Chuck Schumer's disgraceful speech and by Joe Biden, the White House, immediately chimed in their agreement that they thought it was a great speech. I mean, I I think we have to admit now that the Democrat Party and Biden and Schumer are betraying Israel. And that is the one Jewish state, as you point out, the homeland. They're betraying them. Uh, They are reaching out to the river to the sea crowd. I'm just being honest. Yep. And Dearborn in California, in, uh, in New Jersey, Biden sends senior advisors out to try and get their vote. And of course, they are demanding as Hamas is telling them to and Hezbollah, the leaders of these these terrorist regimes, yeah. demanding that Biden abandon Israel and worse, that he undermine them and save Hamas. Biden is now demanding that Israel save Hamas, not destroy it, and that it that it cut up its own country and give Judea and Samaria to the Palestinians. And the last survey showed that 87 percent of the Palestinians supported Hamas and October 7. Why should Israel yep. commit suicide to accommodate Joe Biden's reelection efforts? Well, Israel shouldn't. And it's not going to, you know, yesterday uh, at, at the Republican lunch, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, joined us virtually and, and, and we had a chance to talk with him and he was adamant that Israel is committed to eliminating Hamas and, and, and understand what Biden is doing. This is not new. And I, I know you know this, but, but look, Joe Biden has been the most anti-Israel president our nation has ever seen. From day one, Biden has systematically undermined the state of Israel, and it has been a whole of government effort that has included flowing $100 billion to Iran that pledges death to Israel, that has included flowing hundreds of millions of dollars to Gaza that went straight to Hamas. In a very real sense, Joe Biden funded the attack on October 7th. That has included systematically undermining the administration of Benjamin Netanyahu, so much so that that Joe Biden made clear Netanyahu is not welcome in the White House. He's not invited him to the White House, and he said he's not welcome there. Biden welcomes anti-American leftists like like Lula in Brazil. They are celebrated in the White House. But the elected leader uh, uh, of the state of Israel is not allowed in, in this Biden White House. And that was true long before October 7th. When we come back, Ted Cruz, I don't mean to be provocative in any respect, but apparently everything that comes out of my mouth is considered provocative. But that's because of the <laughs> lunatics on the that's left. That's why we love you. Oh, thank you. Here's my question. And I know it's on the minds of a lot of non-Jews. Why is it, Ted Cruz, that you are more supportive of Israel in its time of need than Chuck Schumer? You're not Jewish, and he is. We'll get the answer when I return. We'll be right back. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Well, it looks like Senator Cruz, uh, the Wall Street Journal is now shilling for uh, Chuck Schumer. They interviewed him and he said, look, I... I'm just trying to save Israel from Netanyahu, he says. 
Now, that's pretty, uh, that's a big ego even for Schumer, don't you think? And not, not only that, this is an elected government. And now, if Chuck Schumer were walking the streets of Israel, he would be despised. What do you make of a comment like that? Uh, look, I, you're right that it reflects incredible arrogance, incredible condescension and hubris. And, and it also reflects the political realities of, of, of the Democrat Party, that they are dealing with a growing radical base in their party that hates Israel, that profoundly hates Israel. You know, I'm told there's a joke in Israel right now that, that Schumer's speech was all about a two-state solution, the two states being Michigan and Nevada. Yeah, right. That, you know, that they're, they're focused on domestic policy, number one. But number two, ideologically, uh, you, you know, a lot of people were surprised. I, I spoke uh, in the weeks after October 7th to a very successful entrepreneur in Silicon Valley who's, who's a man of the left. And, and, and he was astonished at the anti-Semitism on campus and college campuses. And he was like, where did this come from? I, I don't understand. And, and my response to him, which, which you know very well and talk about frequently on your show, it is, is this is the natural fruit of the cultural Marxism that has taken over the Democrat Party. And for the cultural Marxists, they divide the world into oppressors and victims, and they have defined Jews as oppressors, and they have defined Palestinians as victims. And, and the consequence of that for the cultural Marxists is that, is that they – celebrate the violent revolution, the violent overthrow of, of the oppressors by the so-called victims. And, and that dynamic, we see at play in the Biden administration. We see it where even as Biden is undermining Israel on a daily basis, even as Biden keeps saying in the days and weeks after October 7th, let's have a pause, let's have a ceasefire, stop killing Hamas terrorists. Even while Biden does that, it's not enough for the radicals in the Democrat Party, you've got literally White House interns protesting the president. And, and, and that is the sentiment that Chuck Schumer is channeling, the, the sentiment of the modern day liberal that embraces cultural Marxism. So why somebody like you, I've known you a long time, you've never wavered in your support for America, you've never wavered in your support for Israel and its democracy. Why is it that you, at this moment, when their backs are against the wall, when they need our country's help, you're more supportive of Israel than Chuck Schumer. He's Jewish and you're not. Well, look, I, I'll let Schumer speak for himself, but, but I'll tell you, for me, it, it is very much from the heart and it, it is a lifelong passion. And, and, and listen, it's several things. Uh, you know, number one, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, was raised a Southern Baptist. And, and, you know, I was taught in Sunday school when I was a little boy that those that bless Israel shall be blessed and those who curse Israel shall be cursed. And, and, and I'll tell you, for me, from childhood, I always wanted to be on the blessing side of things and not the <laughs> curse side of things. But, but I'll say there, there, there's another reason and, 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 and a very important reason, because I have a job which is to be a senator. And my job as, as, as being the senator for Texas is to fight for Texas and fight for this country. And, and the reason that I support Israel is it is profoundly in the United States' interest to support Israel. Israel is our strongest ally in a very troubled region of the world. Israel is a liberal democracy that, that shares our values, that respects human rights, that protects human rights. Israel, the enemies of Israel are the enemies of America. The people who want to kill Jews are the people who want to kill Americans. And, and mm -hmm. October 7th was a horrific mass murder. It's the greatest mass murder of Jews in a single day since the Holocaust. But it's also one of the worst terrorist attacks against America that we have seen since 9-11. And, and inevitably, when Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden support Iran and send billions to Iran, there's a reason the Ayatollah refers to Israel as the little Satan and America is the great Satan, why they chant death to America and death to Israel. And supporting Israel is in America's interest. I'm going to move to one other issue quickly, because I know you don't have all day here. Um, and that is the border. It's very important to you. You represent a state with a massive border in the south. All these 
people coming across the border and so forth. Joe Biden won't lift a finger. He doesn't care about the terrorists, the criminals, the Venezuelan gang members, the MS-13 gang members, the toxic drugs killing Americans. He doesn't care about the property damage. He doesn't care about the human toll that it's taking on both sides. What kind of a man is this that has a policy that results in the greatest slave trade since the end of the Civil War? It it is brazenly cynical. It is all about politics. Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and every congressional Democrat is willing to turn a blind eye on everyone who is dying. They're willing to turn a blind eye on the little boys and little girls who are being brutalized by human traffickers. They're willing to ignore the women being violently raped. They're willing to ignore the more than 100,000 Americans who died of drug overdoses, all for power all because they look at the 10.4 million illegal immigrants and they see future Democrat voters. And, and, and listen, y- you look at Lake and Riley, who, who has come to really embody the, the, the grotesque evil behind this administration's open borders. Lake and Riley, a beautiful 22-year-old woman in Georgia, a nursing student, beaten to death while she was out jogging. Her death is the direct result of Joe Biden's open border. We had the murderer in our custody. He was apprehended in El Paso. Had Biden simply followed the law, he would have been put on a plane and sent back to Venezuela, and Lake and Riley would be alive. But Biden didn't care. He let the murderer go. That wasn't the end of it. The murderer went to New York. He was arrested again, this time for endangering a child. But New York is a sanctuary city. And they let him go again. Had they locked him up and put him in jail, Lake and Riley would be alive. And then, Mark, during the State of the Union, you saw that when he didn't say a word about Lake and Riley in his prepared remarks. Finally, in response to heckling, he tried to say her name, although he got her name wrong. And his defense, he said, well, she was killed by an illegal, but legals kill lots of people, too. What a grotesque defense. Because there are murderers already in America, he is fine letting more murderers go. Mm -hmm. And the next day, to add insult to injury, what did he do? He turned around and apologized, not to Lake and Riley's family, not to her parents, for letting go the murderer who killed their daughter. No, he apologized for using the word illegals. He was more interested in, 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 in satisfying the woke mob than he, than he is in, in caring for American citizens. This is evil. And by the way, it's not just Joe Biden. It is Chuck Schumer. It is every Democrat. My opponent, the, the left-wing Democrat who is running against me right now in Texas, Colin Allred, very liberal voting record, has voted 100% with Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi over and over and over again. He was asked today about Lake and Riley, and he just laughed. His, his response, it's caught on video, he's just laughing. He refuses to answer the question. He's hiding from reporters. He's following the Joe Biden strategy of hiding in his basement. But their response is to laugh and to take no responsibility for the people who are dying because of their, their grotesque policies. And it is very, very important that you're reelected. Your election's coming up now. They're going to spend $100 million to take you out. Schumer cannot stand you. Of course, we cannot stand Schumer. Uh, And they're going to spend an enormous amount of money lying about you and turning your opponent into some kind of saint. This is what they do. Tell us, how close is it going to be in Texas, and where do people go if they want to send you money and support you? Well, we have a massive battle in Texas. Schumer has made clear I'm his number one target in the country. My last re-election, I won by less than three points. It was 2.6%. The left-wing Democrat running against me is the number one Democrat fundraiser in the country running for Senate. He is printing money. He is already outraising my last opponent, Beto O'Rourke, three to one. Hmm. And leftists are flooding money in. As I said, Schumer is going to spend over $100 million. George Soros is spending millions to beat me in Texas. And, and, and the way we're going to win, but the way we're going to win is, is millions of patriots that listen to your show that are across Texas, that are across the country, going to our website. Our website is tedcruz.org. 
going to tedcruz.org and, and making a contribution, giving 25 bucks or 50 or 100 or, or so many people who sign up for recurring contributions where they give, say, 25 bucks a month, that makes a massive difference. And it's how we withstand the literally millions and millions of dollars that Schumer and Soros are, are putting into Texas to beat me and to try to flip Texas and, and turn this chaos at the open borders into a permanent reality in America. That's what the, the stakes are. And, and so I'm so grateful. Look, every time I go on your show, Mark, your listeners are unlike the listeners of any show in the world in, 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 that, in that they go to tedcruz.org, they make those contributions, and it is literally the oxygen that we need to survive. And Mr. Producer, let's put that link on all the social platforms. Folks, I can't say this strongly enough. Ted Cruz is Mr. Conservative in the Senate. Can you imagine a Senate without him? Can you imagine him being replaced by another leftist out of Texas of all places? They're trying to turn Texas purple. It's certainly one of the objectives of the open borders. We need to push back. We need to elect Trump. We need to elect Ted Cruz. It will be a horrific, horrific election night if one of them or both of them doesn't succeed. So he's telling you, you hear the senator, he's being way outspent. He's got George Soros spending against him. Democrat billionaires, Schumer's organized against him, and the only people who can help him are us. So, Ted, one more time, I want to encourage you folks, if a million of us, a million of us, give 25 bucks each, he's in the running, he's in the race. Go ahead, Ted. What's the site again? The, the website is tedcruz.org, and, and I will tell you, look, I, I still remember back when I first ran for Senate 12 years ago, and I would go on your show, and, and nobody had ever heard of me. I'd never been elected to nothing. Literally, the last thing I was elected to was student council. That's why we love And I'm you. running in Texas, and, and, and you supported me early on. And, and you, I would go on air, and you'd say, we're doing a Levin surge right now, yeah. a Levin surge. Yeah. And I would literally get an email on my phone with each contribution. And while we were on, on, on the radio, my email would explode as patriots across the country would go to tedcruz.org and make contributions i wouldn't have won 12 years ago without the patriots who listen to this show and and i'm not going to win in november without the incredible support of the of of, of your listeners well we're going to have you back multiple times and we are going to have our livid surges and i want to encourage people right now right now please dig in his campaign needs some money they got to run ads on tv and they're way outnumbered right now. We cannot allow the Democrats and the leftists to keep doing this to our candidates. So it's up to us. It's not, what are we going to do, Mark? The answer is right now, what will each of you do to help Ted Cruz? Ted, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. All right, take care of yourself. Can you, he is, he is, he's, he really is. There are many good senators, but I feel Ted is our voice in the Senate. I really do. Don't you, Mr. Producer? He's the guy. Again, I'm not saying there aren't great senators. One of them, <laughs> for some reason, won't come on the show. I don't even understand it. Do you? No. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. And I'm sitting here thinking, Chuck Schumer's been in elected office, as we've mentioned, since he was 25, before he took the bar exam in New York. He's now 75. 
Joe Biden has spent his entire life in Washington. Entire life, half a century. So here's two guys who've never worked in the private sector, who've never done anything but park their asses in Washington, D.C. and tell everybody what to do. So Chuck Schumer says he was trying to save Israel from Netanyahu. Why don't you help save America from you? And pull your head out of Biden's ass and resign, you jerk. You narcissistic buffoon. You gave cover and aid and comfort to Hamas and Iran and Hezbollah. You dumb bastard. That's right, Schumer. What are you going to do about it? How about you, Letitia? Letitia James? What am I doing here, Mr. Producer? Man, oh man of shepherds. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877 877-381-3811. Mr. Producer put together a list of audio clips of one Democrat after another trashing Israel, trashing Netanyahu, and defending the Palestinian terrorists. Because this is now the Democrat Party. They're out of the closet. And you know damn well that before Biden became president, none of this was happening. Certainly not to this extent. So Biden has caused this. So Donald Trump was 100% correct. I was 100% correct that the Democrat Party hates Israel regardless, regardless of what they say. All you have to do is look at the actions against Israel. And the Democrat Party has a very high tolerance for anti-Semitism in this country. Look at the inaction of the Department of Justice, the Department of Education, and notice that not even during his State of Confusion speech, not even during that speech, would Joe Biden condemn anti-Semitism? Keeps talking about Islamophobia. FBI director testified six weeks ago, well, less, a month ago, that the Jews are 2.4% of the population in this country and 60% of the religious hate crimes are against Jews. What he doesn't say is who's committing those crimes. I have an inkling. So the Jews make up 2.4% of the population of this country, and still the Muslims make up a smaller percentage of the country. But you wouldn't know it. Because Biden figures he can pocket 60-70% of the Jewish vote, and unfortunately I think he's right. He's got major donors, including this guy Sabin on the West Coast. He's an Israeli Jew. He's raising hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And there are others. And there are others. George Soros. Anyway, I've got here Al Green of Texas. Chris Coons of Delaware. Jim Hines of Connecticut. Adam Schiff. Well, let's play this one. No, I can't, I can't even bring myself to do it. This guy, Adam Schiff, could well be a senator. We need to get Steve Garvey elected. But some of these states are so far gone because of the way the Democrats expand their power and ensure that they can't lose elections. They change the ballot. It's it's like Lisa Murkowski in Alaska. They don't want real primaries. If Murkowski had a primary, they throw her ass out. So they basically run two general elections. And they do the same thing in California. Basically two general elections. This guy, Richard Ass, I mean Haas, H-A-A-S-S, Richard Haas, can I call him that, Mr. Producer? They love him on the morning schmo, because he's another Israel hater, and I have to conclude so is Joe and his lovely wife, Mika. God knows her father was. With Mara Gay at the New York Times, she's on the editorial page, she always liked to show up on the kook programs, always. She's on the kook program on the morning schmo. Uh, 
Donald Trump should pay his bills, she says. He should pay his bills, so it's hard to have sympathy for him. Well, the New York Times and its ownership didn't have sympathy for Jews being pushed into uh, ovens or gas during the Holocaust. In fact, it said very little about them, and when it did, it put it in the back pages. And Mara Gay works for that newspaper. She's a proud employee of the New York Times. So does Thomas Friedman, New York Times. So does Maggie Haberman, New York Times. They act like they don't work for a corporation, a corporate media corporation that has blood on its hands. But they do. But look at this conga line of Democrats. So the Democrat Party has changed. I was saying last hour that it's purified itself. That is, certainly there are no conservative Democrats left on the national scene in senior political positions of the Democrat Party. You can't name one. So you have these so-called moderates, which means they're not hardcore leftists, but they vote like 80% left, like a guy like Manchin on key votes who really screwed West Virginia, particularly coal miners. But he's said to be a moderate. And then you have the one from Arizona who's not running again, who's kind of a freak, but it doesn't really matter. And so the point is, you can't point to moderates in the Democrat Party. Oh, what about Gosheimer Schmidt there from, uh, he's not a moderate, he's a leftist. None of them are. I like when they call themselves things. They have a committee. What is it? The can-do committee or something, Mr. Reduce, or whatever it is? Let's get things done, committee. Okay, great. But they vote in lockstep most of the time. Most of the time, Gottsheimer Schmidt votes with Talib. He may not want me to say that, but it's true. On big issues, he votes with her. So they purified their party. Ideologically, purified their party. They've run candidates in primaries to defeat them. Uh, they've shamed them out of office. Got a whole new breed of Marxists and Islamists. The media really no different. They've purified the media. There are no conservative hosts on CNN. Well, we don't take ourselves. I don't care how you take yourselves. Jake Tapper worked for a Democrat. Dana Bash is a Democrat if not by registration, by obvious statements. Will Blitzer, a longtime Democrat, if not by registration, by obvious conduct? Andrea Mitchell's a Democrat. Joy Reid, they all are Democrat. No, I'm not. I'm not registered. Yeah, I got it. I didn't say what you do to try to avoid scrutiny. I said you're a Democrat. Dana Bash's interview of Benjamin Netanyahu was a disgusting disgrace, constantly interrupting him, to use the Biden talking points against him. That's who she is. So the media have been largely purified. That's why Elon Musk is such a hero. That's why when you look at Blaze or Breitbart, or when you look at uh, Right Scoop, Newsbusters, and so many other strong efforts, to create an independent media that is pro-American. Oh, that's right wing. If you're pro-American, you're right wing. You got it? Oh, they're right wing, say the Marxists and the Islamists in the bloodlust media. Oh, you must be right wing. <laughs> no, we're not right wing. We're constitutionalists. So they've purified the networks. They've purified several of the cable channels. And by the way, this is why they try to bankrupt... Just as they try to bankrupt Trump, it's no coincidence they try to bankrupt Fox. No coincidence. Lawfare across the board. No coincidence. This is why the Democrats have actually written to cable carriers like Comcast and the rest to have Fox pulled off the cable platform. You wear this? You are, Mr. Producer. We've talked about it. It's in my book, The Democrat Party Hates America. They don't want Fox to exist. They've come after talk radio over and over again. And in some ways, they've secreted themselves in the talk radio as they buy one 
corporate broadcasting company after another and load their boards of directors with leftists. It's the truth. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. There's a great piece at Fox News by our friend here, um, Mr. Penn, Mr. Producer. We're going to have him on the program tomorrow, Mark Penn. And, of course, he was the uh, pollster for President Clinton and for Democrats. And you've seen him on TV. He says Senate Majority Leader Schumer set off a firestorm of his own making last week as he decided to intervene in Israeli politics by telling Israel to abandon its leader right in the middle of a sensitive negotiations with Hamas. The point is Schumer is giving aid and comfort to Hamas in Iran and the terrorists. They're going to hold out as long as they can. He is a a puppet of Biden's. He said, I don't think Schumer will do that again. He heard from pretty much the world. And it's clear that Schumer is out of touch with Israel or he would have known that telling Israelis what to do is like producing the opposite result. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu fired right back, calling it inappropriate to tell an ally in a democracy when they should hold elections and who they should vote for. This is how maniacal, maniacal Biden and Schumer and Blinken are, especially during a war. Israel's the only democracy, he writes, within the region, which otherwise features everything from monarchies, theocracies, Putin puppets, and terrorist regimes. In fact, 72% in the February Economist, YouGov poll see Israel as an ally and a friend, while most Americans, 57%, see Palestine, quote-unquote, as an enemy and unfriendly. While that's mostly Democrats. As Schumer and Biden, that is, who see uh, Palestine as a friend. As Schumer and Biden, and I don't mean Palestine. You know what I mean. Now, are Schumer and Biden generally motivated, he writes, by the conditions in war-torn Gaza, or by the policies of Michigan. There are 2 million people in Gaza dislocated by the heinous attacks of October 7th and the resulting war to eliminate Hamas. There are 11 million people in Haiti now suddenly thrown into the riotous riotous gang rule, yet not much of a word about them nor boatloads of aid going to them. The answer is obvious, politics. You get his point? There are 11 million people in Haiti now... 11 million who are starving, who have been pushed out of their neighborhoods, who are being threatened, and you hear almost nothing from Biden and Schumer. He didn't go to the floor of the Senate and say a damn thing about it. Schumer appeared to be looking to throw a bone to the left wing of the party. That, for reasons of intersectional identity, you notice how they use all the words, it's in American Marxism, Mr. Producer. Oppressor, oppressed. You never heard that, America, on radio or on Fox or anywhere else till I wrote that book, and that's okay. Now supports a movement that subjugates women and allows honor killings of gays and lesbians. Let me repeat that. Schumer is defending the river to the sea crowd in this country, as is Biden, as are the Democrats. A movement that subjugates women and allows honor killings of gays and lesbians. By about 82 to 18, Americans support Israel over Hamas in this conflict. 82 to 18. 18 being Democrats. And nearly two-thirds believe that any ceasefire should occur only, only after Hamas releases the hostages, according to the latest Harvard Caps Harris poll. Other polls tend to incorrectly frame the conflict as between the Israeli and Palestinian people, and even frame in, in an odd way. Americans support Israelis generally, by three to one. And of course, Americans support the well-being of the Palestinian people and support aid to those in Gaza, but no one would have framed World War II as whether you supported the British people or the German people. It was about Hitler, and this conflict is about Hamas, a terrorist group that captured and is still holding American citizens among its hostages today. Like the Taliban is still holding American citizens, And Schumer doesn't go to the floor and talk about that, and Biden and Blinken aren't even asked about it. The administration agrees Hamas is an evil group, but seems to have somehow bought into the idea that Netanyahu is at fault. 
It's Netanyahu's war. I'm just trying to save Israel from Netanyahu. As though any other country would do something differently after an event on the scale of Pearl Harbor, which killed 68 civilians, or 9-11, which killed 3,000 civilians in a country of over 300 million. October 7, killed over 1,200 Israeli civilians in a country of 13 million. He writes, does pen the danger in the politics of what Schumer and Biden are doing is that it emboldens Hamas and actually complicates arriving at any kind of peace. If Biden had remained steadfast in his support for Israel and put the blame squarely on Hamas for creating a tunnel city intertwined with civilian life, instead of singling out Netanyahu over and over again, Hamas would be fearing extinction and would be much more likely today to send out the hostages by blasting the Israeli prime minister for policies supported by the vast majority of his citizenry in Israel, he is instead signaling to Hamas to hold out and not to worry. This is a Democrat. Help is on the way, whether they intended to or not. That is the result of what they have done. That is Schumer, Biden, and their ilk. And they're not really helping themselves politically either. The truth is that the elections is about 2% Jewish. The electorate, that is. And less than 2% Muslim. When asked to name the most important issue, 2% name Israel Hamas. In Michigan, 100,000 votes for uncommitted is a small fraction of the 10 million people there. And just how likely are they to help elect Donald Trump? Really? Really? And the more Biden has waffled on Israel, the lower his Israel approval ratings have sunk. This is not genocide. It's not apartheid or anything like it. Jews are a diverse people. And of the 9 million Israelis, 20% are Arab. I was wrong, not 13 million, 9 million. Of the 9 million Israelis, 20% are Arab and 5% other minorities. In fact, the Economist YouGov poll shows that 58% believe it is Hamas that is committing genocide against the Jews and not Israel. That's 58% of the Arabs in Israel. Shurma put his foot in his mouth, and so many ways it is in attacking Netanyahu. He should stick to commenting on American politics, which is not in great shape right now. And the pressure should be 100% on the leadership of Hamas, which killed Americans and is holding American hostages to release them now or face extinction. Playing domestic politics with the issue will only backfire. But he doesn't care. Biden does not care. He doesn't care. He wants Netanyahu out for his own election purposes. He wants Donald Trump broke and imprisoned. For his own election purposes. Schumer is a political whore. That's all he is. Nothing more, nothing less. And so, his head is stuck up Biden's ass. And he says he's the one that wants to save Israel from Netanyahu. He keeps doubling down. And even thoughtful Democrats, moderates, who are not party apparatchiks, like Lieberman, out of politics. Like Penn, out of politics. In other words, they're not political, uh, elected political individuals. They're saying, like Andrew Stein, the former president of the New York City City Council, another Democrat, what the hell has my party turned into? What the hell is my party doing? Your party is for Iran, and Hamas and the river to the sea crowd because they need 20,000 votes they figured to win battleground states. I'll be right back. The only show with a warning label, The Liberals, The Mark Levin Show. Call in now at 877-381-3811. See, we're not running any erectile dysfunction commercials this hour either, ladies and that's my practice not to run them at all. And I should be Thanked, don't you think, Mr. Producer? By Cumulus Westwood One. I should be thanked. You know, keep it classy, guys. Keep it classy. 
I think I should take a couple of callers at this point. We've been pretty heavy today. So let us continue. Let us go to Jerry, Passaic, New Jersey. Actually, one of my favorite areas. I have a great mall there. On WABC, Jerry, how are you? I'm fine. I'm Jewish, but I have four siblings that voted for these morons. And if that's not bad enough, I got 20 some odd cousins. I mean, and there's no there's no there's no uh, talking to my siblings about anything because they say, oh, we have a difference of opinion. And I said, it's not a difference of opinion. Whether you realize it or not, you're voting for destruction of this country and destruction of Israel. hundred percent. I don't see how the Democrat Party is out of the closet. It is full Hamas. I don't care how they pretend. I don't care if they pretend they're trying to save Israel from Netanyahu. Netanyahu is actually the commander in chief who is saving Israel with the Israeli people. And they're having to fund a two front war against the terrorists and against the Democrat Party led by Biden. That's it. Pure and simple. I changed the name of the Democratic Party. I call them the Demon Party or the Commiecrats. <laughs> Very good. All right, Jerry, thank you for your call, brother. Thank you for your call. Let us go to Keaton in Benton, Arizona, on the great Karn. K-A-R-N, how are you, Keaton? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Let me look. I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't you glad, Keaton, that I'm not allowing erectile dysfunction commercials on my show? Well, I'm not old enough to have any of that. No, but I'm saying, why would I want to run stuff? People are having problems. Let them work it out. Why should I keep running commercials on it? <laughs> you have a point there, yes. Yeah. All right, come on, but, Arkansas. Step up to the plate. Go ahead, Keaton. Go right ahead. Did, did you notice that... Whenever the pre-election deal going on at the presentation that Biden gave, did you just notice how everybody was the same? Like everybody was condoning mm-hmm. it. I mean, how much were they paying? How much did those people get paid to be there and watch that? Now, where are we talking about? That In Nevada? Recent... Yeah, wherever he did his... I think he was in Nevada and like 12 people showed up. Here's my question to you. He can't pull a crowd no matter what he does. So how did he get 80 million votes? Had something to do with... All right, brother. You take care of yourself. Let us continue, shall we? Yes, we shall. Notice how many platforms. We have people calling from the Mark Levin app, the iHeartRadio app, People calling from all over on different platforms. Gee, Willikers. Isn't that great? Let's go to John, San Diego, California, on the Mark Levin app. John, go right ahead. Hey, Mark. uh, Now that everybody knows that New York is a uh, banana republic, it's time for four or five states to start a bidding war on who can house the uh, stock exchange from now on. Because the only thing holding the stock exchange in New York is... Uh, tradition and inertia. Let, and let me so- say this. We have a lot of great conservatives in and around New York, but you make a fantastic point. And hopefully Governor DeSantis or his staff or his beautiful wife are listening to the program. He or Governor Abbott or Governor any of these other red states without an income tax, they ought to be persuading not just the stock market to move to their states, mm-hmm but most of Wall Street to move to their states. That's what they should do. Because if you're going to live in a totalitarian city and state, which New York has become, and they are going to destroy you by using a fake law with a fake judge and a fake prosecutor. And let me explain, by the way, as a footnote, what's going on. She wants to steal his properties as fast as she can, sell them for pennies on the dollar so some of her buddies in the Democrat Party can own them, and then even if Trump wins an appeal, he can't get them back. He's lost them. He can't get them back, and he can't get his money back. 
So they're trying to actually prevent him from having a substantive appeal of any kind. That's what this crap prosecutor and this crap judge are doing, and that's why the media are clapping. They think it's great. You know what? I hope these bastards in the media lose their jobs. I hope CNN goes bankrupt, MSNBC goes bankrupt, CBS turns upside down, the New York slimes with its covering up of the Holocaust. I hope they go under. All of them go under. They think this is funny? There's nothing funny about it. Go right ahead, San Diego. I like your idea. Well, here, here's what happens if the stock market moves. Okay. Most high-end doctors, they service high-end income. They're going to have to leave. Most of the high-end lawyers, they're going to have to leave. You're going to end up... Why would the doctors have to leave? I don't get that. Well, the high-end doctors, they're, 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 getting, they're getting paid by high-end patients. They're not getting paid by government workers, homeless, illegal aliens, and... Um, uh, and, and, you know, well, and, I, guess, I guess the point you're making is it'll resonate throughout the New York economy because so much depends on what happens in the stock market, the New York Stock Exchange, as well as Wall Street. But I do like the idea. And really, I think that the uh, the the brainiacs who work for these various governors in these red states where they have a very, very receptive uh, regulatory and tax strategy for accepting businesses and individuals I agree with you that they should now strike while the striking is good and say, you know what? You can be a sanctuary city, have your illegal aliens. You Democrats can sue the hell out of each other. But count us out. You just demonstrated to us that we do not have law in the city of New York and in the state of New York. And give them the you know what and leave. God knows people are leaving already. I know in my home in Florida. Our home, the family home, we have one here and we have one in Virginia. And billionaires are coming to Florida, near where I live, buying lots, knocking down the houses, and building their estates. They're literally leaving New York City. And they're leaving, a lot of them are leaving New York City. And a lot more are going to leave New York City. And that skyline in New York is going to change. You're taking out the man who helped save New York City in the 70s and 80s, built that skyline, created a massive tax base. <clears throat> God knows thousands, tens of thousands of employees over the course of his, of his business. Fixed neighborhoods, fixed parks, skating rinks. And what exactly has Letitia James done for the people of New York? What exactly has that a-hole contributed to the well-being of the black community, of the Hispanic community, of any community in New York? What has she done? She's a rash on the inner thigh of society. That's what she is, and she's enjoying this. You want to know why? She's a Marxist thug. That's why they love it. There's a place in hell for people like this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Holy mackerel. All right. Let us go to Diane, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the great K-E-L-O. Diane, am I correct in not running erectile dysfunction commercials in this program. I don't think it's appropriate. Do you? Uh, I so much appreciate you not running those disgusting mm -hmm. <laughs> ads on your program. We, we are bombarded with them on television, though. We, we're so, we don't watch much television. But, but the sales department here is kind of annoyed at me. Vince, and I said, well, go, go find a different sponsor. Why do you have to go that low? Why do you have to sink to that? Yes, I agree. I agree. All right. I should take a poll here. I don't mean a poll. I should take a survey here maybe tomorrow, and we'll find out. Go right ahead. First of all, thank you, Mr. Levin, for taking my yes, call. I'm a first-time caller. So thank you. I, I'm so happy to get through to you. 
And thank you so much for your boldness and speaking the truth and just calling out these lying, deceiving um, people that are in Congress. We need to close our Congress. Let our states run run each state on their own. But why? Now, hold call? on. You make a great point. Would we really? Wouldn't we really benefit if Congress met like every other year? Yeah. No. I we, think so too. I'm with you. I think so too. But what I called was Trump should not. Um, select Governor Christy Nome as his vice president. Um, she's just another female, Mike Pence. She doesn't mm-hmm. listen to her conservative base anymore. She just does whatever she wants. And she just signed off on a bill in South Dakota here, in, um, um, Senate Bill 201, and she signed off on the CO2 pipeline, which is just pie in the sky. Just What's that? A bunch what of the hell baloney. is a CO2 pipeline? It's a CO2 pipeline where they're going to um, put all these pipelines under the ground, farmers' land, um, and most of the farmers' landowners do don't want it, and they're going. To, it's just another um, subsidized green energy fraud, just like windmills are and solar is. But you know, why are we going to shove CO two in um, down into the ground in pipelines? So yeah, your point is it's not a pollutant. What's the problem? No, we need to breathe it. Right. And you know? listen, if the plants don't breathe it, we don't have oxygen. Right. It's yeah. that simple. It's called osmosis. I think we all learned it in fifth grade. Right. But um, she just signed off on that. And her son-in-law is part of this carbon, uh, Summit Carbon Solutions, and he's going to benefit a lot. What from the all hell are this. carbon solutions? If we don't have carbon in this country, we die. Oh, yes, we die. We definitely we die. do. Mm-hmm. But this. Um, well, very interesting. Very interesting. Well, thank you for your call. You sound like a lovely lady. I appreciate it. Brian, Miami Beach, Florida, Sirius Satellite. Another one of our great platforms. Brian, go right ahead. Hey, Mark. Uh, love your show. Just curious. Does Trump have a case to bring to the su- federal Supreme Court? Should oh, yes. Know, On the Eighth the Amendment. York? and He does. And eventually, I think he will. Uh, my friend Arthur Ferguson, a uh, brilliant lawyer, and I really came up with that idea. The Eighth Amendment, everybody was talking about due price. No, 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 no. It's the Eighth Amendment, and among other things, by the way. And uh, he absolutely does. The problem is they're going to steal all his property before he can get there. Well, that, that was my question. Does he, can he go, I mean, immediately jump, or does he... Is, I suppose you can try to get an emergency appeal, but typically what these courts say is... You got to go through the process. So, look, the Supreme Court, there's so much going on that is so corrupt and diabolical with these DAs and this attorney general, the federal attorney general and this clown uh, Smith, that it's just not possible as a as a practical matter for the court to take all these cases. They don't have an ability to handle them. So what they're doing is uh, flooding the zone like they are with illegal immigration, flooding the border, flooding the zone. So you don't really have time to think about what they're doing. You don't have really time to address it at an appellate level. They want rush, rush, rush. Let's get things going. And when you have two thirds or more of the judges who've looked at this, who are in the back pocket of Joe Biden, the back pocket of the Democrat Party, you can see how friggin corrupt this whole damn thing is. The legal profession will never be the same. You know, people used to make jokes about it. It's not a joke anymore. It is, it is filled with reprobates. Same with our courts. Same with the so-called justice system. People will never look at this system the same ever again. And these judges and these prosecutors, they've divided this country along with the media more than any other entities in this country, period. Rather than checks and balances, we have a mob which they throw in with. Thank you for your call, my brother. We had a lot of other callers. I'm not enjoying these calls. We had, to, we had to do a little more of it. It is talk radio. That means me, by the way. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, freedom fighters in Ukraine, and our brothers and sisters in Israel. We have your back, despite the despicable Democrat Party and the river-to-the-sea media. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.